there LEGO Robotics fans! I'm Anton from Anton's Mindstorms and today we're doing something exciting. We are building and programming a wall following robot. Um, this little fellow here will follow walls and it will um, take two kinds of corners. So it will um, drive into corners but it will also follow boxes. Um, this is pretty hard to do on one sensor, so on this robot I've installed two distance sensors. Uh, they are laser distance sensors, uh, they are harmless laser distance sensors, they are actually infrared laser distance sensors. These laser sensors are super fast and super accurate, so the robot can navigate the room really fast. Um, you actually can't see the lasers coming out of here because they are infrared lasers, which means they are below the visible light spectrum. They're in the warm spectrum. They can't hurt your eyes, but sunlight can hurt these lasers. So this only works indoor. If there is a lot of sunlight, if there is a lot of infrared radiation, um, this sensor will become confused. Um, I've had it once on a very sunny day when the sun was shining into my room, um, but usually, uh, normally when there is no direct sunlight, these uh, sensors work perfectly. Good, for this uh, project we are going to use some uh, spike prime parts, very few. Um, two distance sensors, of course. I'm using um, the VL53L0X distance sensors. Um, this is a V2, V2 version. Um, whatever is after the dash doesn't matter much, but um, the, the number, the type number has to be exactly the same. There are V53L uh, sensors with 3X, 5X, 4CX, and all of those don't work, so make sure you have the VL53L0X. Um, this is one brand, this is an other brand of um, VL530X. So um, this is the DF robot uh, part. Um, they're all the same. Um, just showing you that you can use different sensors, but they have to start with um, VL530 to uh, work on this project. Good. So now that we have uh, our sensors, we also need a board. This is the LMS ESP32 board and it's a board that um, you can get on my website and it's super handy for connecting third-party electronics like these sensors to the Spike Prime. Let's start building. Um, first we are going to uh, put on the caster wheel here um, and I'm putting the caster wheel on the side where there is no USB so I can charge my robot later easily. Um, okay, I could put this on now, but I want to guide the wires through there. So first I'm going to mount the motors. Uh, the wheels have to be away from the caster wheel, of course. Um, let's put this motor over there. Good. Now I'm going to guide the wire through there and this wire too. And actually, I think I'm going to guide this wire through there too. So now we have a full wire package going behind the caster wheel and this will clean it up nicely. Okay, so now we have our robot set up here like this. Now I can, um, I actually used um, like this I don't know what this Lego part is called. It's a uh, kind of pin connector with two uh, connected pins. And um, it, the holes were exactly the right distance to mount this sensor. So I used two screws and mounted it there. So then we can snap it on to the front. Um, it's upside down, but that doesn't really matter. <laughs> the distance is a distance. Then I'm going to make sure that I have the right side motor here. Um, 
let me see okay now i'm pulling and pushing the cable a bit and i'm going to pull it all the way back and nicely um, insert it into port e so the wires are clean pull it back so the wire is close to the body here and doesn't drag on the ground let's do the same thing on the other side so pulling my wire and inserting it into port f good so now my wires are tight um, and they're not dragging too much uh, it's time to add the wheels you can simply snap on the wheels like this that will hold for our robots then we are going to add this board um, doesn't really matter how you mount it let's put the headers that way uh, you can use uh, pins or uh, pins with cross axles, uh, but this like is simple, it works. And then of course we need to um, see where the wall is. So let's mount this L-shaped beam here and um, put another distance sensor. So this distance sensor, um, I didn't screw it, but I actually used some hot glue to glue it to a tree length beam and this makes it uh, very flexible uh, the glue is only behind the sensor so I can still remove the jumper wires uh, should I wish good now um, for this sensor I used a uh, Grove uh, jumper cable which is nice because it snaps right into the board here um, of course there is only one Grove port so um, for that sensor I'm going to use just some uh, random I.O. pins um, and it also needs power so here on the board you can see on the top right there is a ground so that's where the black wire goes then below that let me see if I can show it on the camera there is a um a um, 3v3 so it's a it's a power pin here that's where the red wire goes and um the green wire let's put it on i open and it's it's kind of hard to read on the camera um, so that's I open 15 I think and the blue is um, I open 13 so um, we'll have to remember that because um, this sensor if you remove it it shows that um, the green wire yeah the green wire has a d so that's a data wire and the blue wire is a clock wire so in our program we're going to have to define the clock wire and the data wire and here we can see that the um, clock wire did i remember that right yeah blue blue clock blue clock so the clock wire is on IO pin 13. The data wire is on IO pin 15. Good. So, uh, oh yeah, and then of course we have to connect this one. Um, let's connect it into port, uh, yeah, port A, why not? Mm -hmm manage the wire a little bit like this doesn't matter much so here we have our wall following robot with two distance sensors um, 
the uh, LMS ESP32 board connected and um, everything wired up, it's uh, time to program it. The first thing we need to do is program the LMS ESP32 board and then afterwards we're going to program the spike hub with Pyrex. I hope you liked the video so far. Remember to hit the subscribe button. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, it's a lot of work producing these videos and extra subscribers really make it worth it for me. Let's continue. To program this board, I'm going to connect it with USB to my MacBook. Um, and normally, if you connect it via USB, the little red uh, LED lights up and this means um, the board is powered with 5 volts. So the board can still be on without the LED but the um, red LED means there is like a high power on the 5 volt rail and once this is connected I can use um, a MicroPython development environment to uh, program it. Let me manage that wire a little better. I don't like it when wires drag. Okay, like this, it should be out of the way. Good. So anyway, so um, once it's connected to your laptop, you can use any IDE. Uh, normally I use Tony for this video. I'm going to try and use Viper IDE. Uh, it's something new, so I'm not sure if it'll work. Let's try it. Good, let's go to viper-ide.org and um, I think the nice thing about this IDE that is that it's fully web-based in Chrome and um, so you can use it on Chromebooks which is nice in school environments. Now um, if you click the connect button in the top right there will be a USB serial connection uh, which is how we connected our robot. Let's start over real fresh here. So once it's connected, you'll only probably see a boot.py, which um, isn't actually needed. So you can delete that too. And um, now we have a clean file system. Um, let's first uh, upload the drivers for the distance sensor. So we are going to create a new file called vl 5 3 l 0 0 x dot pi okay and uh, now this is an empty file and we need to put the driver in there so we can uh, google for a micro python vl 53 l 0 x and um yeah, whatever. Uh, probably this um, repository comes up. I'll put also a link in the description where you can go to this file, VL530X. That's the exact name that we made. And we are going to copy the raw file. Um, once that's copied, we can paste that in here in our new uh, PI file and press the save button. Um, this uh, still says zero. Okay, now it says 21 kilobytes, file saved, this has worked. Let's make a new file and call it main.py. And this is where our program will run. If you put a file on the um, LMS ESP32 board and call it main.py, it will run every time you boot it, which is kind of handy. Um, the f and then, uh, since we're starting blank, we probably have to import um, the sensor class. So from VL 53L 0x, we are going to import VL 30x. Um, L0x. So this, this will be our class for um, uh, talking to the sensor. Um, 
it makes these yellow underscores, but I don't think it actually parses the file for this class. So I think this should work. We are also going to need I squared C. So from machine, we are going to import pin. Uh, okay. And from machine, we are going to import um, soft I squared C. Um, then let's try the first sensor. So um, our let's first make an I squared C. Um, instance let's call it i squared c one and it's going to be soft i squared c um, so the first one is going to be the the green uh, laser distance sensor and it's in the growth port where the um, clock line is on um, pin four and uh, data line as DL is on bin five. Um, the green uh, sensor was uh, facing to the right. So I'm going to call it right dist or just right is going to be a um, a distance sensor device field 53L0X with our um, I square C um, as an input here. And um, normally if we um, start, then read the distance sensor and then stop, we should get at least one distance reading from our sensor. Let's try this very simple code and run it. Oh, I made a typo. It shouldn't be soft I2, but soft I squared C. Okay. Um, I should probably save it. Let's try and run it. Soft, ah, okay, it's propagated the error here with autocomplete. Let's run it again. Um, oh, I made an error attack here. It as clock as data. SDL shouldn't should have been SDA. Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> now we've debugged the program and you see here appearing in the we have a reading of 537 millimeters. So let's do the same thing for the front facing distance sensor. And for the front facing distance sensor, we're going to make an other, uh, oh, the, the autocomplete is kind of weird in Viper. I think you have to press enter. Yeah, instead of tap. I'm used to pressing tap for autocomplete instead of enter. Anyway, um, this is going to be pretty much uh, the same, um, except that our um, clock line, I believe was on line 13 and our data line was on line 15. Um, we're going to create this um, duplicate all of that and see if we can read both our right and front um, distance sensors. If I didn't mess up any numbers or wires, this should run. Let's try it. Okay, we've got two distances. So apparently to the right we have um, uh, 561 millimeters to the front 577. Now I'm going to put my hand in front of the front uh, distance sensor and it says 110. So this 
seems to be working. So we have the basis of a program here that uh, reads the um, distance sensors that we plugged into our LMS ESP32 board. Now we have to read them all the time and send them to the um, spike device. So for that we're going to use pup remote and for this we're going to uh, import from pup remote import pup remote sensor and um, so this emulates a sensor which Pyrex can pick up. Let's uh, create an instance of it up remote sensor and it's going um, I don't think we need any parameters um, then we need to um, add a channel so it's like a communication channel and we're going to call that channel dists or distances and the formatting of that channel um, we are going to send across two numbers, so I could um, put ii, which would be enough for two integer numbers, but these numbers are four uh, bytes each, which is uh, quite a lot for the, uh, the numbers that we're going to send. Um, actually, I can also write this as 2i, it's just the same, or I can use um, um, hh, which are like half length integers and they use only two bytes. So I think both works, but this like seems to be a bit more efficient. Um, you could also try bytes, but that's only one byte. And then um, we could only read numbers up to, uh, at least here in this case, between minus 127 and plus 127. Um, capital B's would give us numbers between 0 and 255 we're going to use h which is um, enough for most purposes um, all of that um, is going to go away and then the only thing we're going to do now is start an infinite loop in that infinite loop um, let's say that front I'm going to be lazy. Call F is the front distance. Um, call um, D the side distance, or or actually write dot read. Better call it R, and then um, we are going to update the channel. So we are going to update our data um, for pub remote with um, front and right as inputs and then we are going to process uh, data so we are going to process requests coming in from the spike hub via pybricks um, i'm going to power on the hub you can see that the hub is powered on um, and it's got pie bricks on it um, with the square there and now I'm going to try and run our program for the first time let's press the run button here um, oh yeah that's a typo we should of course pass the name of the channel that we're going to update here uh, I forgot that. So we want to update the channel disks with the front and right data. Good. Uh, now the program runs and it seems to be connected to Pybrix. Um, and it poses as a sensor with ID 62. Good. Now let's go over to Pybrix to do something with our uh, distance sensor data on the robot. So I'm going to go to go pybricks.com and um, here is uh, pybricks um, 
Normally, I already flashed my hub, but if you didn't um, use the install Pyrex firmware here, you can always revert to the official firmware with uh, the restore button. It's an easy process with a USB wire. Um, but once that's all flashed, you don't need any wires anymore. This is really nice. Um, let's uh, connect to our hub here. Okay, our hub is connected. Um, you can see the bluetooth uh, line there and let's make a new program let's call it um, let's use python we'll uh, use the spike hub and let's call it wall follower good um, and um, remember that on the lms esp side we used pub remote to um, uh, send the data over to the hub and we will need a driver or a class or a library so to say for Pyrex to actually um, decode that information and we will uh, make a new file called um, a pub remote and um, not use a template it can be an empty file and here we are going to paste the code for that library and we can then import it in our wall for follower program you can get the code for pub remote um, on github.com i'll put the link in the description of the video um, and um, there are two options you can use pub remote.py which is a little larger or you can use pub remote hub which is smaller you can see six kilobytes versus um, 12 and it's um, a reduced version for um, low memory hubs so for here for the spike prime this doesn't really matter very much but if you use a technic hub the gray ones they have uh, uh, a smaller memory size so it's better to use the reduced version size we can go over here and uh, click copy raw file once that copied, we can go back to Pyrex um, and paste all of that into pubremote.py. Um, that's gone. It's uh, automatically saved, which is nice. And now in our wall follower program, we can go from pubremote import pubremote hub. Um, and let's see if all of that works. Let's say pr is a remote hub and um, remember that it was connected to port a um, let's um, uh, see if we can get our distance data print pr dot call um, dists that's what we called it and see if we get our distance data let's run this um okay yeah oh of course we have to define the channel here so we have to um of course add channel um dists and tell pub remote how to decode it remember that we use hh so that's the half int the, the two half int numbers um of course now once we um define the channels you can use multiple channels but we only have disks let's run the program again good so we have two numbers here and they look pretty accurate i'm going to uh, put my hand in front of the front distance sensor and see if we get i'm i'm keeping my hand let's say about five uh, 50 millimeters in front of it and see if it that's accurate yeah it says 66 that's close enough so this is actually the front distance and 536 millimeters is the right distance from this we can build a wall follower so instead of just printing it we are going to um, use a robot and um, turn left or right depending on what we see for this we need a a couple of motors so a left motor um, on the left side and remember that we put it in port f and the right motor is on the right side and that one is in port e 
And if you look at the side of your robot, um, you can see that the uh, left motor has to run counterclockwise to make the robot go forward. So we are going to add a direction uh, counterclockwise so that Pybrix knows what is forward in the case of our robot. Then we're going to add a drive base, which is a really nifty feature in Pybrix. Um, it allows us to um, input a speed and a turn rate and the drive base will do all of the calculations for the motor speeds, which is super handy. Um, let's make a drive base here. Uh, give it a left motor and a right motor a wheel diameter which is 56 for the green spike wheels and the axle width um, you can count studs so uh, we have two motors which are four uh, holes wide so to say you can count holes uh, two of them that's eight the width of the hub is uh, seven holes uh, that's 15 and then there is half a hole to go um, to the middle of the wheel two times that on each side so that's in total 16 holes and we know that a hole is eight millimeters so um, i find that the easiest way to input an axle width on my robots no measuring needed just counting holes which is much faster um, once we have this we can uh, start a loop and we're going to drive and continuously look to our right if we if our distance to the wall is correct so let's make the infinite loop while true is still true uh, and while true is not uh, alternative facts we are going to run this loop and um, so the first thing we are going to do is um, call our pub remote for discs and we're going not we're not going to print it this time but unpack it into two var variables i'm a bit lazy while typing so front is f r is right and if you you can see here below um, when we printed it we got two numbers um, between uh, round brackets um, if you ever get this kind of return you can instantly unpack it in uh, micropython with a call like this so it will know that it has to put the first number in f and the second number in r which is super handy um, for our first program we're only going to use r and um, we are going to call calculate our error um, relative to the wall so if um, um, let's say we want to drive um, wall distance let's make that a constant that's a good practice to um, put settings into a constant so you can easily change them later um, and in Python it's good practice to um, a constant is a variable like anyone else but to name them in capitals so readers of your program will know that this is something that will not change during the execution of the program it will always be 150 and stay 150 unless you change it up there right um, back to our program here error error is the um, the error in our distance to the wall um, error will be a um, negative number if we're too close to the wall so let's say we're at um, 100 millimeter from the wall subtract 150 from that it will be a negative number our error is negative 50 and the cool thing is that we can feed that back into the turn rate of our robot so let's say um, turn rate is error times 1.5 or maybe one works too um, and so if we're too close to the wall error will be a negative number and you can look it up here in the drive base documentation um, um, positive angles mean turning right and negative means left now since our uh, distance sensor is on the right um, and we are too close to the wall 
we want to turn left. So we need a negative number, which is exactly what this is going to do. Um, so this is going to work uh, for our, uh, our maintaining the distance, because if we are too far from the wall, this will uh, result in a positive number and we will turn back to the wall. And what's nice about this is that the turn rate becomes very high if we're very close to the wall and we need to do a lot of correction but the turn rate becomes really small if we're almost at 150 millimeters and it will be small correction so it will be smooth sailing then um, let's set up our speed um, let's try 200 millimeters per second so that's also a very nice thing about pie bricks everything is in si units if you have a turn rate it will be in degrees per second if you have a speed it will be in millimeters per second so you can do uh, calculations and um, really know what you will be getting so then finally once we have our speed and turn rate the, the only thing left is to have our drive base drive at our desired speed and our desired turn rate so this um, should be a um, program for a wall follower that uh, follows the wall at 150 millimeters from the wall and drives around at 200 millimeters per second. Let's see if we did that right. Cool. Did you see that? When I put it too close to the wall, it instantly uh, tried to get away from the wall. And now it's following the box quite nicely. Um, because when it sees a corner of the box, it says, Hey, my wall is gone. I need to turn right. Oh, wow. There is a new wall. Now I can follow that again. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Oh, my wall is gone. Turn right, turn right, turn right. Okay. So, oh, my wall is gone. Turn right again. And this is how the robot actually reacts to the wall. Um, you can see that even if I push it away from the wall, it will turn back. So let's try and tease the robot a bit. Okay, I pushed it too far and it panicked and it turned too fast towards the wall. So we could try and reduce uh, um, the uh, multiplier a bit or we could um, program a maximum turn rate so that the robot doesn't start to turn in such uh, small circles. Um, I'm going to tease it a little less right now. You see so I can push it away from the wall and it'll turn back. Now let's do maximum tease. See how the robot handles this kind of turner. Boom. Ouch! I think we need a new program with the front sensor active so the robot knows when to turn away if it sees a wall in front. Let's program that. It seems that we have two situations. One when, where there is no wall in front and one when where there is a wall in front. So let's... Uh, currently we have the situation if the front sensor um, let's say there isn't a wall visible within 250 millimeters in front then we can just do whatever we did and uh, follow the wall however in the other case if there is a wall in front we want to turn to the left and not smack drive into the wall like we just saw there so um, we want a turn rate that is negative let's say um, negative 50 and we'll, let's slow down the robot a bit um, to uh, 20 millimeters per second let's slow down to a crawl um, turn to the left and um, maybe 50 degrees is still quite fast but we'll see if that works um, and then uh, as long as the wall is uh, visible we'll turn left at this uh, rate and as soon as the road is clear again will uh, probably uh, this calculation will happen again and speed and turn rate will be calculated along the previous uh, method and the drive base still drives at a certain speed and turn rate every loop um, so this is a also um, maybe an example of uh, 
writing a program that is dry do not repeat yourself so if for every situation i'm not going to uh, read the distances again i'm going to do this once per loop and i'm going to call the drive base once per loop the only thing i'm going to vary is the calculations so um, i have a nice and easy uh, to read and short program let's see if this will avoid walls this seems to work more or less okay so there it goes following the wall like it did before and following the wall and now is the big moment yes it turns away from the wall a little shaky though but it does see the wall in front and it does manage to actually uh follow the box and uh, turn away you see that turning away from the wall is a little shaky um because it turns away um sees a free road and then thinks oh yeah i gotta go but then uh, the the sensor to the right sees no wall so it starts to turn back and there's probably some tuning uh, to be done there let's see um, how we can uh, compensate for that i think it's in the proportion uh, with the distance to the wall to the distance in front so um, Let's maybe try and reduce the front distance and see if that reduces the shaking. Stop the robot. Um, reduce the front distance to uh, 200 millimeters. And actually, I also would like to speed it up a bit. So let's go for a base speed of 250 and run it again. Good, now it's a bit faster. I like fast. And it goes a bit closer to the wall, turns away, and boom! It follows our wall. That's a pretty smooth sailing there. I think we can do it even faster. So let's see if it can handle 350 millimeters per second. We want to hit the speed limit here. Spike is go! It still handles that, which is pretty awesome. I, I think part of why it handles um, such great speed is the distance sensors uh, the laser distance sensors are super fast and super accurate especially compared to the um, onboard ultrasonic uh, sensor or the included ultrasonic sensor so this uh, pretty much concludes the programming and um, the video we were able to uh, build a robot that is a wall follower and can follow hollow forms and can also drive around boxes this concludes the video well uh, thanks for watching i hope you learned something i hope you thought it was interesting if you want to build this for yourself um, i don't think you need building instructions that was easy um, you can just Google uh, for the sensors, they're pretty common. Uh, the board, you can find that on my website, antonsmindstorms.com, and I'll put links in the descriptions to all the other software tools that I used and the libraries, so you can reproduce this for yourself and maybe even improve it. Um, for instance, you could make it faster, you could make it um, backpedal when it runs into dead ends, um, you can make it handle turns more smoothly, there are all kinds of improvements you can add to this little fellow here to make it run even cooler. I hope you have fun with it and see you in the next video. Bye bye!